won nine poles that year with that car, yeah. Had a real engine in it, real everything, and right now it's sitting at my Chevrolet dealership, even though it's a Ford. I'm selling my Chevrolet dealership up in Tennessee right now on display up there. Yeah. And then my last car that I ever drove in my life uh, is on display at the Motorsport Hall of Fame of America in Daytona Beach. So it's, it's on display at the Daytona Speedway right now. And at midnight, my favorite car is up at our new Ford dealership up in Dandridge, Tennessee. So those are my three favorite cars. And they're on display at different locations. Midnight's that one you want so many races in, midnight, right? Midnight I won a ton of races with. And Midnight was the car that they put me in the Hall of Fame with in 2013. Had a completely restored as raced. And in fact, um, it's like I said, it's up at a Ford dealership. And last week I got a phone call from Michigan International Speedway. And we're going to take it out of the Ford dealership, send it to Michigan for their, uh, their, their I think it's a 50th celebration in the June race. Because I won that race in that car. And the car is sitting there perfect, and so we're going to put it on display at the Michigan Speedway for that whole deal. Yeah, that's a nice deal. But the one, there's a really cool display in Daytona at the Hall of Fame of America down there. And it's got Indy cars, stock cars, and my last car I drove is on display there. So, Rusty, tell everybody how Midnight was named. That's a cool story. That is a cool story. And Midnight was named. We built this new short track car. We were really proud of it and put a lot of effort into it. We took it to Richmond, Virginia, and I qualified really well. Anyway, we took the lead and led the race the whole day. And with like 30 or 40 laps to go, I think, it started raining. And so they red flagged the race, and we were under red flag for a couple hours, drying the track out and stuff. And when we went back green, I took the lead, won the race, and when I crossed the start finish line, my PR director, a guy named Tom Roberts from Miller Brewing Company, he had a digital watch on. And he just happened, he was timing me, you know, he's out there timing me as I'm going around. But anyway, as I crossed the line, he looked at this digital watch and it struck midnight. As soon as I crossed the line, he ran up to me in victory lane. He said, I got a name for this. He put his hands right up here. I'm pulling the window net down. He goes, I got a name, I got a name. I said, what is it? He goes, midnight. I said, why? He said, when you just crossed that line, it struck midnight. I went, okay. So, so we named it midnight and midnight went on to win 18 more races. And that was, a, that was one of the best cars that Team Penske ever built for me. And, uh, and all the fans remember it because it was the black and yellow car. The black and gold, really cool paint scheme, real slick looking. And still probably one of the most beautiful paint schemes this sport's ever seen. And that, so, that was the genuine draft. The, the number two Miller genuine draft, black and, black and yellow car. Yeah. So you'll probably see some pictures of it somewhere around here. On the walls, maybe. I never did have a Hans device, no. Oh, wow. I, well, let's put it this way. The last five years, I did. The last five years in NASCAR, I had a couple different style devices. The last two years, I ended up with a Hans, but everything before that, I had the strap that wrapped around me with two cords coming across that would hook in your helmet. I just couldn't get comfortable with that Hans. And I never... Everybody uses them now, but they're... you got to... I, I just had a tough time. Yeah. Well, last year you told us about how you won that race at Daytona by looking over at Gordon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what you do, you just pull up on, 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 we're on a restart for the, the Bud Shootout. And I won the Bud, Bud Shootout. We're on a restart. He's side by side with me. And my brother Kenny was actually behind me uh, driving Andy Petrie's car. The Square D car was called it. The electrical company sponsored it. And I ended up winning the race. Kenny finished second. But on the restart, it's me and Gordon side by side. And I, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm reaching up the line, I look over and I see him just looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. <laughs> so I, and I, I've played with a couple of drivers doing stuff like I'm about to tell you. But anyway, I pull up side and we're sitting there and I'm leading the race. And he keeps, keeps looking at me. So then I just glance back over at him. I glance back over him, I look at him. He, and, and when I look at him, he looks at me and, and as soon as, as soon as I looked over and he looked at me, I nailed the drive. <laughs> I watched his eyes. I watched his eyes, and when he took his concentration off and twisted his head and looked at me, I met at that throttle and I went, and he grabbed that gear shift here and he blew second gear out of it right there. <laughs> Tore the transmission out of it, start finish line. He was mad as a freaking because I knew exactly what he did and I told damn everybody. <laughs> you can't get good feedback to your brain about what the car is doing with it's, it's just shoulder support yeah yeah I personally do you know and I know he does and you certainly had the bad wrecks I mean Earnhardt when he drove he man, he drove the stuff he had he drove was crazy he, he just sitting like these old 
pickup truck seats. They had springs in them. And he had this big piece of metal on the side supporting him, you know. And He put both of those together himself, I think. Didn't yeah, he did. Yeah. My worst crash ever was Talladega, Alabama. And I went into her in 25 times. 25 times. Yeah, Good Lord. Right speaking, speaking of Earnhardt, I think he had something to do with that, didn't he? Isn't that the one down front? That's the one. Yeah, him and I got together on that one. Yeah, sure did. So after, so after that car finally stopped spinning 45 times, you're just sitting there, we are upside down. Right I was side. knocked out. Okay, that I was, was knocked out. I woke up in a helicopter. Really? Yeah, loaded me up in a helicopter, took me to Birmingham, Alabama, to the hospital there. That's where I came to in the helicopter. Yeah, still got a big pin. I got a, from here, about from here to here, I got a one foot pin still on my wrist from that wreck. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Took it out. It's just, doesn't go off in metal detectors or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How's the hell with it? Leave it in there. So these are the cars of everybody that's going in this year, right? No. This is this last is, year? This is the guys that are currently in. Like oh. They got put in last year. Ron Hornaday. Red Byron, uh, Robert Yates, and this is uh, Ken Squire, the announcer. That's the reason he's set up. Oh, all that. okay. And this is Ray Everham. He got put in, and he was the... Oh, Ray's the well, he, he's, he's already in. He's, this, he's in currently this year. Now, going into to next year's Hall of Fame induction, then that's Penske and guys like that are going out. That. that is really cool. I'll tell you, a lot of us grew up looking at that stuff while you were out there doing it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll never forget those TV sets. We always looked at those. That was, I, I still, you know, you look back at them right now. Can I, I get still you to like tell them. the Smoky Eunuch story? Oh, uh, the Smoky, uh, that was a good one. <laughs> well, I wasn't there. I heard the story. I thought it was how they used to, uh, fuel balance was everything in the world, you know, and they wanted to go farther than anybody. and. And the rules weren't that good back then, and so Smokey, he dreamed up how to uh, uh, hide some fuel in his car, and so he wins the big race. Smokey comes in, and they pull the fuel cell out of the car, and they look through everything. And they back then, they would just sign something or wave something say, you're legal. And even if something happened after that, and they found that you were cheating, but they didn't catch it, you were still legal. <laughs> so he went through there and went through the whole process. They pulled the fuel cell out, checked everything for fuel mileage because he went farther than anybody and um, couldn't find nothing. And Smokey said, I'm illegal. He said, you're illegal. Smokey gets in the car and starts it up and drives it off. And the gas tank's sitting over here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was pretty well, you know, we know what a run on a gas and a float goes a little bit, but the story uh -huh. was he drove a lot farther. And when it was all said and done, he had his roll cage full of gasoline. <laughs> he was. He didn't care about safety at all. He filled the. He filled the roll parts of the roll cage up with gasoline, Brilliant. and he had it tapped in there. Yeah, wow, and that was way back in the day. You know, that's why some of the motorcycles were built. Yeah, they built that. See some of the brake rotors, how complicated looking they are. That this is the. This is what some of the current stuff looks like. Actually, these how they're trying to make them as light as they possibly can. And basically, that's four pistons pushing against a brake caliper or, or brake pads but this is how they scallop them all out and try to make everything as light as they can and put the weight or the strength in certain areas that's really one those damn things are a lot of money they got more expensive and now they look at the fuel pumps down here you see you used to have a mechanical fuel pump on the engine and now the pump's not on the engine it's in the gas tank now what kind of shocks were you running back from the U.S.? Uh, I raced Bill Steens and Penske's. Yeah. Mostly Penske's at yeah. the end of my career. We were... In fact, the shock, that's one thing that has not changed. The shock the technology really hasn't changed that much at all, you know. Because uh, before, yeah. our cars never were laying right on the ground and being so dependent on that splinter in the front for aerodynamic downforce. We used to work so hard with the rebounds and the flow of the pistons and all that. I almost feel like... We were every bit as what they are right now on that because they're not so dependent on that shock any longer as they are aerodynamics. 
Still the pen. Penske's come into your career. You start building the helmet while you're racing for it? Yeah, yeah. sure did. Well, he was building those before I started racing for oh, okay. Yeah, you look at everything and you're trying to find what's wrong with these pieces. <laughs> at least I am. Hamburg rear end. The snout on the bottom, on the side is offset, twisted up, put a little camber in it. Aha! Uh -huh. Jack bolts, probably hollow jack bolts. Let's see if it says what it is. Six. Is there a reason for making the clutches and the nose a small diameter, I guess? Yeah, it's just for, for the small, the lighter and the smaller, they'll accelerate faster. As soon as you touch again, with the small clutch, it's... When you hit the throttle, it'll rev up much faster. Oh, yeah. If it's really big, I didn't realize it'll they were rev up slower and yep. won't come back down. You know, well, the nurse with the gold car, that car right there that Goodyear made, mm -hmm. everybody wanted that. And so when you won the championship, that was one cool thing that Goodyear would come step out with a big golden car. When I won the title, the guy who did the gold car passed away or something went wrong. He couldn't do a gold car, so they did a crystal car for me. And so I'm the only one that ever had a crystal car. And I wanted a damn gold car bad. <laughs> trying to convince me that, oh my God, you're the only one ever in the history of NASCAR to get a gold or get a crystal car. So there it is. So I got that. But then later, That's when I retired from Team Penske, in, in, uh, when I got out of the car in 2005, I'm on the stage at a Waldorf Astoria. And here comes Roger and I think it was Leo Mel with Goodyear. They come walking out and they gave me a gold car. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got it. I finally got it, yeah. That's not it, yeah, but look at this. So this side's a NASCAR. Yeah, they're just trying to show you what the real street car and a... Um, and what a regular car looks like, you know? The differences. That really is kind of cool, isn't it? Knowing the difference. Mm -hmm. Shifting with the paddle shifter on the wheel. Right's for shifting up, left is for shifting down. It's a four speed transmission. Fourth is where it is. We're in Texas, so fourth is where you want to be all the way around the track. If during the course of the race you get into a crash or Rusty wrecks you, whatever, whatever, whatever happens and you want to reset, just hold the brake down, bring the car to a stop, and there's a red button on the right hand side of the wheel. It'll either be separate from the wheel like this, or it's either going to be right in the spoke of the wheel. You hold that button down for three seconds. Once the car is stopped, you'll be reset back to pit road. You get a brand new car. And then you go out and wreck rusty back. Right. <laughs> when you hear that gentleman say start your engines, you're going to tap the gas pedal in the car. That's going to put you in the car. It's going to give you the cockpit screen. You'll be in the car. You're going to see a pace car out in front of you, red, white, blue Ford Mustang. When the whole field's assembled and ready to go, that Mustang's going to pull away. It's going to go around the track for one pace lap. Follow in second gear to pace lap, so nobody's racing yet. Everybody stays behind the pace car, just lined up two by two. You pace the pace car around the track, and then you'll hear your spotter say green, green, green after the pace car drops off on the pit road. And then you're racing. Any well, how long do you run? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, five minute run. Which either can go by like that. So if you spin out, you just got to reset and go to pit road again, right? Reset, get a new car. Go back and now when you hit the wall, it just fixes itself and keeps going, right? We, we follow you right in the wall. <laughs> yeah. That's my kid thought. If only it were, were that easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, as soon as this one's done, we'll get you out.